Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over the basics of groups and operations in TSM4. Groups and operations are the building blocks for all of TSM functions, and once you understand them, you can build your own workflow, save yourself some time, and make more gold in game. TSM, or Trade Skill Master, is a powerful add-on that enhances many aspects of economy and gold making in World of Warcraft Shadowlands, WoW Classic, and the Burning Crusade Classic. In this video, I'm going to be showing you Burning Crusade Classic. The interface is a little bit different because the auction house is set up a little bit different in this game versus Shadowlands. If you are totally new to auction house add-ons in WoW, you should go watch my Beginner's Guide to TSM video for the basics. In this video, I will show you how to create and edit groups and operations. We'll also go over custom pricing strings and what to do when you get a TSM error. If you are not already, please subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out and I really appreciate it. Thanks guys. All right, let's get started. So what is a group? In TSM, a group is a list of items in game organized into sets for the purposes of treating them in a specific way. An operation is the action that you want to be taken on those items. One example is to look at a list of all the cloth in the game. For this group, it will have linen, wool, silk, mage weave, rune cloth, and nether weave cloth. The operation is the action that we want to take with this cloth. So in this example, we want to sell any cloth that we get in stacks of 20 for the current average market price. Once both the group and the operation are set up, we are able to execute a function that will take the items in the group and perform the tasks as outlined in the operation. First, I'm going to show you a few different ways to set up groups in TSM. To create a group, we will first open up the interface by typing slash TSM in the chat box. Click on groups at the top and click the plus sign to add a group. Next, you will wanna give this group a name. We'll be calling this group cloth. If you have the items in your bag, you can select them and then assign them to a group on the screen. If you do not have the items in your bag, you will select the base group over on the left hand side and start typing in the search bar. Select the items that you want to add to your group and then pick the group that you want to assign those items to. Keep in mind that this will only show you items that are currently not assigned to a group. In addition to creating groups in the add-on, you can use the online tool and WoWhead to create groups with additional filters beyond just the item's names. First, go to wowhead.com or tbc.wowhead.com and create your list of items using the database and filter those items down to show you just what you want in your group. Next, you'll highlight the items that you want to import and copy those items. Next, you will go to the Trade Skill Master Group Maker tool and paste the items in the box, and below that, the tool will generate a group import string. Copy that import string and go back to the game to your group tab in TSM. Click on the import icon next to the search box and paste your import string in the text box. This will create a new group called imported group. You can rename this group and move it by dragging and dropping it into the group tree. If these items aren't exactly where you want them, you can move them to the parent group by holding down shift and click move to parent group, and then you can assign them where you would like. In this example, I've already had my group set up for these items, so I'm going to delete the imported group once I have moved all the items to the parent. Then I will further sort them into the correct nested groups. Once you are familiar with creating your own groups, you can save yourself some time by importing groups that others have already created. From the TSM Group Maker online tool that we were just using to create our import string, scroll up to the top. There are two buttons. One is for the top groups and the other is to view all groups. Click on view all groups and this will let you search by keyword. We are going to type in TBC and then sort by the number of views. This is a good place to start. Currently I'm setting up my alchemy groups so I'm going to be searching TBC potions. copy and paste the import string into the game, and there we go. Here I have imported all of my alchemy potions for TBC, so now we need to sort them into the correct buckets. Select the items that you want to move, and once selected, the items will have a little check mark next to it. From here, you can either select the add button if you are moving it into one of the next nested groups, or you can click and drag the selected items to an entirely different group in the group tree. Using pre-made groups can save you a lot of time, but one 
thing that I learned about these groups is it's much easier to import smaller groups that already fit your groups that you want to build. I could import every single item in alchemy that can be crafted in the game. And one benefit is that I'd be less likely to miss something, but importing 200 items in a group doesn't really save me much time since I'll have to manually look through the list and further sort this giant group uh, into my maybe five or six smaller ones. So for me, I prefer importing smaller groups, such as this TBC Potions group. Since I'm currently a potion master, it's good to have these separated out. This lets me have everything together, and it will help me out when I'm trying to calculate if something is profitable to craft. One last thing I want to show you is how to find an item that is in the wrong group. If you don't have a ton of groups set up, you can select the parent group and type the missing item's name in the search bar. Once you've found it, select the item and move it to the correct group. Another way to find missing items, which I think could be quicker for some, is to import the missing item from the group import string tool. Make sure the checkbox is selected to move the already grouped items, and this will dump the missing items into the imported group. And from there, you can move it to where it belongs. Let's move on to setting up your first operation. Operations are a set of instructions that TSM uses to decide how to treat certain items. Let's start with a simpler operation such as mailing. Now I want my uncut gems to go to my jewel crafter, so let's make that operation. Type slash TSM to open up the interface and click operations at the top. Find mailing operations on the left hand side and click the plus button to create a new operation. Rename the operation, I'm going to call this Gems for Processing. Target character is who you want the item sent to. I'm going to type in my Jewel Crafter's name. Keep the amount that we will leave as zero and no max quantity. This means that all the items in the group that we are selecting will be sent. And then we scroll down to the bottom and select the groups that we want this to apply to, which is our Uncut Gems group. To execute this operation, we will go to a mailbox, click on the Groups tab at the top, Select the group that we want to send and click on the Mail Selected Groups button at the bottom. And this sends all of my uncut gems to my JC. All right, I'm going to show you how to set up an auction operation, and that is to sell items using an operation, but first we need to talk about custom strings. Pricing is where TSM gets a little bit more complicated. A custom string is a function that looks at certain variables and returns results based on information provided. Here is a simple example. We want to create a string that tells us the price of the cheapest gems available. Say we're in the process of leveling jewel crafting, we want to spend as little as possible. Our custom string would be min, current price of Azermoon stones, current price of blood garnets, current price of shadow draenite. Min is the function. This is the action that the formula is gonna take. The min function will return the lowest number or the minimum of all the choices listed. The price of Azure Moonstone, Blood Garnet, and Shadow Draenite are our variables. On the back end, we have a whole database of pricing information, and so when this operation is executed, it will look to see what the current price is. So for this example, we're gonna say that our current pricing for our gems is one for Azure Moonstones, four for Blood Garnet, and three for Shadow Draenite. So when we apply the min function, it's going to return one, which is the price of the Azure Moonstones. So let's create our first auction operation. Create a new operation by clicking the plus next to auctioning operations. And we are going to leave our details as default and select the groups that we will be selling with this operation. My cut gems I always list for 12 hours, so I'm selecting those for my groups. Next, click on posting, set the duration to 12 hours. I want to list everything in my bags to sell, so I set the max to 200 and the stack size to one. Now let's take a look at the posting price section. This is where TSM will look for instructions for setting the auction price. I'm going to leave the bid and the undercut amounts at the default. Now there are three different prices that TSM will look at and take action depending on what you select. Minimum price is the lowest that you want to list something for. So if the lowest auction is below your minimum, it will follow the instructions in the drop down here. I have selected to post the item at normal price if it falls below the minimum. The same goes for the maximum price. If an item is above your highest price, then it will follow the action set here. I'm going to have it post at the maximum price. Since I chose to post all the items below the min at normal price, I will need to have a function that calculates what the price would be in this third field for normal price. So to reiterate, TSM will undercut the lowest posted item unless the item's price is below the minimum or above the maximum. 
Then it will follow the instructions as assigned. One of my favorite tools for creating custom strings is this web-based editor that is shown here. You have all the functions and all of your variables, and it helps you create a workable formula that is less likely to give you errors. Now let's take a look at the default function for our minimum price. So by default, there is a nested function for our minimum, maximum, and normal price. The first function is check. So it's going to return the parameter of the second item if the first item is greater than zero. Otherwise, it returns the last item. To further explain that, our first item that we're looking to see if it has a number greater than zero is going to look at first crafting, and then it'll look at DB market, and then it'll look at DB regional market average. If it goes through all three of these prices and they're all below zero, then it's going to return the third part of the string, which which is one and a half times vendor sell price. If it is greater than zero, it's going to look at the second part of the function, which is max 25% of the average of crafting, DB market, and DB region market average. If you are totally new to creating operations, I would recommend starting with the default and carefully reviewing all of the items that fall outside of the minimum and maximum prices that you have set. From there, you can make tweaks to your formulas and come up with a normal price that you're comfortable with. I'm not going to recommend any specific pricing strings for certain things because it's largely going to depend on what your market looks like on your server. Every server is going to be a little bit different. I'm currently on a high pop server where items move a lot faster than they would if you were on a low pop server. And there's also a lot more inventory. That and I don't want to make any claims that specific formulas would make you money like they make me money on my server because it, it really depends. You need to kind of do a little trial and error and figure it out for yourself. Sometimes when you're using TSM, you'll get some errors in your chat box. If you're dealing with an error that you're unfamiliar with, try Googling the error first to see if a solution is easily found. If you cannot figure out how to fix the error, then go to the community for help. TSM is a hugely popular add-on and has a helpful user base that's willing to help you solve the problem. You can find help at one of the following places. I usually like to start on the WoW Economy Reddit. It has a weekly TSM thread where you can ask questions. If you are having trouble, make sure you're including screenshots and a really detailed description so that someone can answer your question. If you just go in there and say, TSM isn't working for me, that's not really helpful and not something that someone can help you troubleshoot. You can also check TSM's knowledge base and FAQ on their support page. They keep this pretty updated. And um, if you are just starting out, a lot of the times the problems that you're facing could be found in the FAQ. TSM also has a Twitter and a Discord that are very active. I'll include the links here and they're also in the description below. Don't be afraid to ask for help if you can't find the answer on your own. So that's all I have for this video. Please let me know if you like this style of tutorial by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!